welcome to history lab uh, if you love history and you think you can learn uh, different things from history which will be useful and you want to learn about history and historical events then please do like and subscribe this channel and today we are talking about king prithvi narayan saha who was the last ruler of gorkha kingdom and first monarch of kingdom of nepal he was a pioneer of the unification campaign of nepal he was a ninth generation descendant of king drukdev saha and he succeeded his father at the age of 20 as the king of gorkha he was born on 11th of january 1723 ad Drukh's father was Narbhupal Saha and mother was Kausalya Devi. In the early days, father Narbhupal Saha had four wives. He was born from the second wife, Kausalya Pati Devi, who was a princess of Palba. But the first wife, Chandra Pravati from Sasi, took care of the upbringing. The development of the character of the Prithvina and Saha is a result of the influence of Chandra Pravati. Although he was taught by gurus from the early age of five, Never development of character is the contribution of the king. Seeing the neighboring prince of neighboring states uh, being spoiled through his involvement in excessive pleasures, he took Prithvi Narayan Saha out of his pleasurable things. Hence, there is no record of him in such pursuit and being diverted in the wrong path. He was enriched with virtuous qualities such as courage, diligence, and positive character. Since his early days and always showed interest in the country affairs alongside his father, since very young. The attack to Nuwapur and Nepal was divided into many small Rajyogi states under constant quarrel. He envisioned making Gorkha a strong nation and unification was the only way to do so as the East India Company had begun to colonize all the small states in India. After his coronation in 1743 AD, his first target was Nuwapur as it is stood between Gorkha and Kathmandu and also provide a trade route to Tibet. But his campaign began with a failure. His first attack to Nuwapur in 1743 AD didn't bear his desired fruit. After the defeat, he went to Banaras or Baranasi and learned a lot about his neighboring states and Indian subcontinent in whole. He met with different people and learned about trading, weapons, and with this new knowledge of tactics and politics, he returned to Gorkha and started building friendly alliances with the state of Palpa, Lomjin, and Pranavi. This helped him to send his army from three directions to Nuwakot and lay waste of the kingdom in 1744 AD. And now, his next strategy was to conquer all the surroundings of the Kathmandu Valley, comprising of Kantipur, Radgaon, and Patan, also known as Nepal Valley then, and force them into submission. Kritipur, a strategically advantageous place and a dependency of Patan. But he was significantly beaten during the first attack of 1757 AD and narrowly escaped himself. But his entrusted and favored minister, famous Kalu Pandey, couldn't survive this war. It took him until 1767 to regroup and resume the conquest. But his next attack after the regroup was on Makwanpur. It was only on his third attempt in 1765 AD he captured Kritipur successfully. Following a six month long war and victories around the area, surrounding Kathmandu Valley, finally King Prithvi Narayan Saha now focused on Kathmandu. A lot of King Prithvi Narayan Saha's conquest was helped by the fact that all of the Rajas were in constant quarrel and disagreement within themselves, which was the case among the three states. The presence of Prithvi Narayan Saha in the surrounding of the valley placed the chief of Kantipur, Jayaprakash Malla, in a difficult position. Surrounded by the ever-growing Gurkhas and completely cut off from outside help, King Mola then sent a messenger to the Patna to seek help with East India Company. But before any answer came to him, on the day of Indrajatra, when the citizens were rejoicing, he walked into the valley and ended it uh, once and for all. King Jayaprakash Mola then fled to Patan, and when Patan was uh, defeated, uh, the both of the kings fled to Badgaon, which was also conquered later on. The anger of losing King Jayaprakash Malla further sent his Wakils or messenger to strike a deal for the expedition of the English towards Kathmandu Valley and the king will pay for the expedition and also reward would follow. The English expedition was headed by George Kinlock but the English couldn't reach to Kathmandu Valley. Due to the ongoing monsoon, flooding rivers, lack of supplies and uh, also the constant guerrilla style attack from the King Prithvi 
Mughal Shah's army and finally they retreated after a crushing blow in Singuli Dal. Towards the end of the day, he was troubled by his illness to a great extent. Then he decided to call all his relatives and sons and give them the knowledge of why and hows of his conquests and also some advice about the future and policies to move forward. This is known as Divya Upadesh. The advice or Upadesh had many useful tips which is even useful today itself, which goes to show the far-sightedness. He had one of the famous lines from Divya Upadesh that reads like, Mera sana dukha le arjya ko muluk hoi na, yo char varna chatis raat ko saja fulwari ho, sabai lai chetana bhai, which translates like, this is not the nation gained by my trifle efforts. This is the garden of all kinds of flowers and may all be aware of this. King Prithivinarayan Shah always considered Nepal to be a yam between two huge boulders, famously quoting Duitonga Beach Kota rule. He always considered to maintain a good relationship with China and Tibet in the north and towards the south with his East India Company. He suggested to maintain a friendly relationship but with awareness about their shrewdness. They always he always saw his new conquered nation as a proper Hindu nation and he strongly emphasized on local production and utilization of the goods. In Dibyo Pradesh, he was of idea that if foreign traders enter Nepal, they will suck the nation dry. He famously said, Praja Mota Bhaya Darbar Pani Baliyur Hansa, meaning if peoples are capable, only then the palace will be strong. He advised to have forts on the high places and that forts be guarded with cannons and similarly in the entry points that is the Vanjangs of the valleys it, there should be iron gates which also guarded by the cannons. He was a complete leader. King Prithivinarayan Saha was courageous, ambitious, equally studious of his acts and the acts to follow. He was very far-sighted and the things he warned us about did came to haunt the nation of Nepal later. The advices he gave us are useful even to this day. He always focused on the people rather than just glories, hence he was a complete leader. And finally, King Prithivinarayan Saha at the age of 52 in 1775 died at Devi Ghat, Nuakot. Upon his death, his son Pratap Singh Saha took the throne and the unification campaign was continued by his younger son Bahadur Saha.